trading doesn't need to be scary. <laughs> Trading doesn't need to be scary, as we'll find out in this video. But also using a piece of Betfair trading software doesn't need to be scary. On BetAngel, you can use everything in practice mode. The Excel spreadsheet integration, the semi-automation via servants, automation, manual trading, all of these can be used in practice mode without any risk to your trading bank. Even better, you can use them all together so that you can learn to get the best out of BetAngel or your favorite Betfair trading strategy. Head on over to the website to download a free trial today. So trading doesn't need to be scary. I know that's an easy thing to say, but I've been through that whole process. When I first started trading, I traded short-term and financial markets and it was a total disaster. I basically couldn't get anything right. And every time I wanted the market to go up, it went down. And every time the market should have gone down, it went up. And I just sort of, you know, just kept on pumping money into the market and it kept on taking it from me. And this is the experience that I get from a lot of people when they first start trading. However, the great news is, is that I went from completely hopeless, useless money loser um, through that whole process to be able to understand exactly what my true objective was um, and how to do it. And obviously came on to become very successful. So I have a really deep understanding now of what it takes to actively trade and some of the key components behind that. And it's interesting because you tend to find that people sort of are often split between people who can't control their risk and people who want to control it too much. And they are often at opposite ends of the spectrum. But actually, when you look and frame trading correctly, you begin to understand your objective a little bit better. When you understand the way that the markets work, that will help you. And there's obviously a little bit of understanding the way that you work as well, uh, that will help you understand exactly what your true objective is. In order to be really successful, you need to pull all of those things together. However, there are some really simple things that you can do that will put you on the right path. So my journey from complete idiot to uh, something a, a bit better uh, started in a very unusual place because one of the things that you notice about the way that the market works is if you have some structure behind what you're doing, in other words, you have a defined entry point, you have a defined exit point, and your money management is good. By that, I mean, you're not doing anything silly. You're not doubling and chasing losses or adding to your position, or you know, you're not modifying your behavior significantly in terms of staking. What you will find over the long term is that you will actually break even. Now, because you're gonna pay commission on your winning bets or trades, you're gonna actually end up um, having a small loss over a period of time that will drain into your bank because obviously that's the way that exchanges make their money. But essentially, if you go into a market, you have some structure to it and your money management is correct, then the worst that you can do over the long term is break even, less your commission. So once you realize that, you begin to lose a little bit of the fear in terms of the way that you trade. You begin to put some more structure into your trades so that you can understand um, exactly what you can do to positively influence that, to, to be able to move yourself forward in towards profitability. And the most important aspect of that is that you need to successfully frame it. So when I started trading on each individual sport, I would go in and I would define a window of opportunity. So on football, we would sort of say, you know, we're gonna back this team and trade out at half time. We're gonna lay under two and a half goals and trade out in 15 minutes, um, all of those sort of things. If we were on tennis, it would be, I'm gonna trade in here, I'm going to, um, trade out here, you know, maybe when a player is a breakdown, I'm going to open a position and close out at the end of the first set. And when we look at horse racing, um, you've obviously got clearly defined windows within which you can operate. You can basically, you know, sort of back 10 minutes out and trade out at post time or any variant therein and thereof. Now, I know I use racing a lot, but that's just because it's so easy to demonstrate because there's a race every five milliseconds or so and therefore it's really easy to put some trades into the market and pull them out and demonstrate key concepts. A bit harder on some other sports, we have to wait around for a bit of time for that to happen. So I apologize for always using horse racing, but it's just a very simple one to demonstrate key concepts on. But the interesting and the important thing to understand is if you have some structure to the way that you trade, and then you actually 
um, trade according to that structure, very clearly defined, you don't modify that behavior, and you stake correctly, then there's no reason why, even if you trade completely at random, uh, you should not break even. But I remember telling this to somebody and somebody coming back to me and saying, well, I've just lost 20 in a row. It's like the whole market is fixed against me. And I said to him, well, if you're losing 20 in a row and it's it, it, on horse racing, if we back something 10 minutes out and trade out post time, you're going to get, it's going to be 50-50 as to whether you profit or not. And um, I said to him, well, you know, doing 20 in, in a row incorrectly is about a million to one shot. So there's obviously something else going on within there. Um, and that's what we discuss next, uh, how other things can influence uh, the way that you trade. But yeah, fundamentally speaking, if you trade a market at random, you'll get random results and you shouldn't lose too much money. But that should give you the confidence that you can understand exactly how the market is working. So one of the characteristics about the way that the market works can be demonstrated if we speed up um, this market that we have on the screen here to demonstrate uh, the way that it behaves. And typically most markets uh, don't go in a straight line. They don't go from here to there. Um, they, this to there doesn't happen. And the way that you have in your head that the successful trade will occur uh, it typically isn't the way that things um, behave. Because actually what happens within a market is that the market goes up, it goes down, and it just jiggles around all over the place and then eventually reaches its point of desire. Every market has this sort of path of desire. Um, and that could be a slightly trending market. Um, it could be a market that's range bound. There are many different facets to the way that the market could potentially play out. In a football match, you know, it may be a very open match and therefore there's a tendency towards more goals. Or it could be a dreadful match where the attacking team can't seem to muster a shot between them and therefore it, it tends towards lower goals. Or if you're looking at tennis, it could be um, that the two players um, uh, are sort of going toe to toe with each other and therefore it's a very tight match or it could be that uh, loads of unforced errors and therefore there are loads of breaks but there's a sort of a, a, a tendency a theme that runs behind each individual market but necessarily there's a meandering process to go from there when we look at how this market is behaving you can see the price going up it's going down it's going up it's going down and this is what we define as whipsawing and you know a whipsaw uh, is would be used to cut wood and it goes up and it goes down and, it, and that's where the name comes from basically the market whipsaws but from a trading perspective what you have to learn is you have to learn um, to actually use this to your favor not to use it negatively against you the person i talked about who lost 20 in a row had got themselves into this mindset whereby every time the position started to go against them they would cut their position out so what they were doing effectively was guaranteeing a loss. They weren't letting the market come round and work within that range in order to be able to profit from it. They were basically panicking every time a position went against them. So they just took loss after loss after loss after loss after loss. But that's not how the market works. The market works basically by um, generally moving in one direction. There's a lot of noise within that market. That noise creates a traded range or a tendency within the market. And your objective as a trader is to work within that particular range. You're not cleverer than the market. You're not going to uh, precisely predict exactly where things are going to be. You're going to accept that the market is going to be slightly noisy and your objective as a trader is to work within that range. In that range, there are people using form, there are people backing, there are people laying, there are people making judgments and other things. There are people who are, who are getting involved because their cat just walked across the, the room in front of them or something. Um, and that's what creates that noise. If you're a trader, you're going to be exploiting that particular characteristic. You don't want to fall victim to it by being on the other side of it. So be aware of how the market is likely to behave and then work within that range. Frame your trade neatly, accept that there's gonna be a little bit of a noise and you don't have to panic when the position goes against you because as the market meanders through its particular process, you can never accurately describe that, but you can actually frame the trade neatly and work within that particular frame. So yeah, when the market is active and moving, you shouldn't get freaked out by very short-term price movements. Have an idea of exactly what you're gonna do. And when you enter a trade, you should know what will make it a successful trade, what will make it an unsuccessful trade, and what you'll do at that particular moment in time. The moment you enter the market, you should know all of that um, and then execute against that and keep that level of consistency that will allow you to understand what things you need to modify in order to trade profitably.
So if we have a look at how this marker is going to behave, what I'm going to do is put some markers on the screen for you here. This marker, the first marker, will basically indicate to you uh, where the price started. And then I'll subsequently put on markers that will indicate the high point within the market and the low point. Now, the interesting thing is we have introduced markers into Bet Angel. I can't remember when it was, um, must be well over a year ago uh, from the point of recording this video. But the idea is that you should use markers to be able to frame your trade or key points within the market or other factors that you want to take account of. So make sure you go out and use them. I'm not going to talk about them in great depth here, um, but on this video, I'm just going to annotate uh, the key points within the market. But when we look at the way that this market behaves, you can see from our starting point, basically the price meanders around all over the place. But what we'll actually find by the end of this particular market is that it actually ends up exactly where it started. And this was one of the key points that I wanted to make is there's a definable range here. You work within that range. And what we're doing on this particular video is we're working in this range by putting uh, uh, effectively a one tick offset order into the market. And you'll notice that what I'm doing is I'm only using one order at any one particular moment in time. And that is so that I can contain my risk and also keep my money, 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 ugh, money management on my side. And that is so that we put one trade in, we wait for that trade to fill. And then if it does, we can put another trade in. But if it doesn't fill, that's it. We don't do anything more. And that's how we contain the losses within this particular trade. Now, each market is going to behave slightly differently. And, 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 you know, I did pick this particular market, a competitive handicap, to demonstrate this concept because I knew roughly the way that the market would behave. But if, for example, and we're looking at horse racing here, um, I looked at uh, a maiden where none of the horses had any level of form, uh, that market, you know, if this is the first time they've ever seen a race course, there is no form lines on which people to make a judgment. So the market becomes one that's driven by opinion and emotion. And as a consequence, that becomes a little bit harder to accurately frame. And you tend to find that those markets, uh, if they're uncompetitive markets, tend to, in other words, it's got a shorter price favorite, tend to move around a little bit more. And you know, this sort of trade probably wouldn't work so well because the traded range is gonna be much, much higher. Uh, but in a market like this, you can see the way that it, it meanders up and down. And if we went through that typical beginner trader process of basically saying, all oh, the position's gone against me, let's cut out we would have been intensely frustrated because the price would have done that several times and we probably would have ended up with a loss. But because we understand the way that this market is likely to behave and because we're working within that particular frame and we're keeping a lid on how we're actively managing the money within the market, we actually end up with a positive trade here. And curiously, on this particular occasion, um, the price actually ended up exactly where it started. Uh, but in the course of that time, it moved around all over the place and because we were trading effectively, we were able to take advantage of that. Compare that to somebody who's just starting out, they will probably end up on the other side of that because every time the position goes against them, they'll feel the need to panic and get out. Whereas because we understand the market and we've seen this market quite a few times before, we can just sit there and take advantage of it. So yeah, my message overall here is you don't need to be scared of trading. If you approach it in a methodical manner, you should be okay. And you've got to realize as well that um, if you trade completely at random, you should break even. Now you're gonna lose a little bit of money over the long term because of the commission that you paid on your winning trades. But fundamentally speaking, gross of that, you will break even. And if you're losing hand over fist, then there must be some other characteristic that's playing um, a role in those particular outcomes. The most important thing to do is to actually frame a trade, have a clearly defined set of rules where you sort of say, this is when I'm gonna get in, this is when I realize that the trade has gone wrong, and this is you know, where I'm gonna get out in terms of uh, profitability. So as long as you define that, that will allow you to control your risk. And by controlling risk, what I'm talking about here is you know, you're limiting the potential loss that you have, and that will give you the ability to tweak some of the other factors to be able to uh, get to profitability. When you um, are trading, it's all about taking risk. It's not about avoiding it. So uh, the market tends to be quite noisy. And ultimately, as a trader, you need to be working within that range. And that is where your potential profit comes from. Um, but in order to do that, you have to take risk. Uh, there's no such thing as a completely riskless trade. Um, saying that, that there are now and again, um, but you're never going to make serious money if you don't take risk. It's all about that. 
But in order to be profitable, it's about tweaking those elements um, and minimizing your losses. But if you understand that the way the market works and you frame your trade correctly, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. Now, one of the hardest things that traders tend to have uh, when they're active and in the market is the emotional and the psychological aspects of, of trading tends to get in the way. So it helps to have a very structured plan in order to define exactly what you're going to do and when. And if you can or if you want to, there's no reason why you can't automate it. If you're testing a strategy within the market, then I suggest that you do automate it simply because that will give you pure results that will define very cleanly and neatly exactly what your objective is within any market. But I went from being completely hopeless to being a very competent trader. Um, and so a lot of the things I've learned along the way I've tried to encapsulate in this short video. Um, and there is a lot more that could be discussed about each of these individual points. But ultimately, what I've tried to de demonstrate in this video is that if you approach your trading in a structured manner um, and you put some logic into it and you understand the way that the market moves and you work within that, there's no reason that trading needs to be scared.